my name is Cassie and I am the creator of Pieces of Scrap and in today's video we're going to be doing another vlog, crochet with me, market prep type video. But first off I wanted to show you my next project that I'm currently working on that is not amigurumi and it is a jumper like short overalls type outfit thing. Um, so I've got two panels or I've got one panel finished. This is the back panel. And this is the strap. The way that this jump this jumper works is the strap threads through a hole in the front and then you kind of like tie it off and it like hangs off like this in the front, which is really cute. But this is the first back panel and I'm alternating this mint like sage green color with this um, denim like variated crochet uh, yarn and this is all a cotton blend so it's really lightweight and I'm working on the next back panel right now and then there's two front panels and you also sew buttons down the front so I'm really excited and then there's also two pockets on the front so I'm really excited to finish it I feel like it's coming out so cute I love the pattern on it it's just so pretty and I'm excited to finish it um, I had almost finished this back panel last night, but then I realized that I missed a decrease like way earlier, like down here. So I had almost gotten to the strap portion and then I realized that I messed up. So then I had to go back and um, rework those rows so that it was symmetrical with the other back panel and that it was correct. So I'm going to try to finish this. Um, before my vacation comes up. I have a vacation in mid-June. It's currently mid-May, so I have about a month to finish this, so I'm going to be working on this in my downtime when I am not busy with amigurumi or other video stuff. So I will be checking in with you guys periodically with the progress I have on this jumper. Hey y'all, so just checking in, I finished the assembly of this overall pattern and I'm only now just realizing that overall it's way too big and that is as a medium. The shorts are like just way longer than they should be and the crotch is like way lower than it should be so that tells me that it is too tall, like too long for my body and especially in the torso as you can see here these like knots where you tie the uh, straps are supposed to be like lower they're supposed to be down here so overall it's like four or five inches too long for my torso which is weird because the pattern um, the small to medium I don't think it adds extra rows you're it just makes it like wider it doesn't make it taller so I don't understand what happened there and I don't know if it's worth taking it apart and redoing the entire pattern again I think it might come down to just starting over with a new pattern and another thing is I don't really like the stripes I don't like this color combination it's not very flattering on me and like this isn't like a t-shirt that I'd wear under it I'd probably wear a more fitted t-shirt or like a fitted tank top to wear underneath it and it doesn't give me much structure like it makes me look like a rectangle which I don't like um, I just look really boxy and even if it was smaller and like fitted to the right size it would still feel I don't know really boxy and I don't like the pattern so if I'm gonna do this again I would probably all one color and all like this variated yarn and main reason is like on the seams it's kind of obvious that there's a seam there especially on the back um and I just don't think it looks very good it's kind of ugly in my opinion so I'm disappointed to have put so many hours into making this um one of the problems I ran into is I had to like remake the front panel for both sides I had to remake it twice because I made it made the first panel um, and then I made I started working on the second panel but it wasn't lining up properly like I missed a decrease or something so it wasn't 
lining up properly and then when I finished this panel I realized that this panel was still a little wonky and I went back to redo the entire thing again um, and then after that I realized that the reason it looked wonky is because when I was um, working on this side I ended up looking at the instructions for the back because they're like nearly identical except the um, armpit area there's like more decreases so yeah I, I think main issue with the pattern not that I'm giving like a wholehearted review or anything like that I'm sure if you use the yarn that she bought for this specifically it would have worked a lot better but I think partially it's like it comes down to she's obviously not a native English speaker based on her the way that she speaks in her YouTube video and you know the way that she writes her pattern it's not like consistent all the way through something that I noticed was in some rows when you would do a decrease it wouldn't tell you to chain anything but like other rows where you would do basically the same thing you would have a chain afterwards or in some cases there would be extra chains so for example if you if the next row you were gonna slip stitch like four stitches or something like that it still said on the row before to chain two but i thought that was weird and it created this weird um i don't know it wasn't like a clean sharp edge but it was like a rounded edge that came back down if that makes sense i don't have any footage of it because as i was working on this i was so confident that it was going to come out well that i didn't i didn't take any footage of me working on it or any like hiccups that i had through the process and I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't because I'm sure you guys would have liked to see what I'm actually talking about, not have to, you know, use your imagination to visualize what I'm saying so much. But anyway, I'm going to take this apart now. I'm very sad that I have to take it apart. It's going to be a big pain. Um, as, as I was assembling it, I ended up leaving some yarn, like, without being weaved in because I figured that I would probably potentially not like it based on how big it was coming out and yeah I think I'm just gonna have to scrap it and I'm really sad that I still haven't really found a clothing pattern that I really like the only one that I've ever liked I will put on the screen I can't remember the creator but it's like a very simple like cami top and it is so cute and it uses a um, like half double crochet, single crochet in the same stitch kind of pattern um, throughout and it looks so pretty. And I have one of those in white and I have one of those in denim blue. So I have that pattern to look forward to and I know that she is a creator that makes quality patterns. So I will probably be looking at some of her patterns and see if I can use any of this yarn to make one of hers. Maybe I'll make some more of those shirts. Um, it is summertime, it's nice to have those cute shirts around, so I'll check in with you guys later when I have updates on other things that I'm working on. It's been a couple weeks since that last clip that you saw and I have finished what I ended up changing the overalls into, so we've got this pair of shorts and I'm working on a shirt to go with it. So it's a pair of shorts. Um, I will link the pattern below that I used. It's a free pattern from a vlog. And it's really, really cute and simple. Um, and I added some pockets to the back of it. And the pockets that I made aren't part of the pattern. It's just something that I ended up improvising. Um, so that isn't part of the pattern, but these are kind of like high-waisted shorts and with a drawstring at the top, so they're really cute. And then I've made a shirt, I've made two shirts like this in the past. Um, it's just a simple like tube with two straps and um, the neckline is really um, boxy and square. Um, and I started making another one of those with the variated shade, but this is with a moss stitch, which is basically a single crochet and then a chain stitch and you alternate them every single row. Um, so 
it just comes out really, really pretty. And especially with this variated yarn, I think it looks so cute. And I've kind of been improvising this as well. It's not like the same exact pattern as the blue one that I just showed you. The blue one that I showed you used a different kind of moss stitch where I think it was like a double crochet and like a half double crochet worked into the same stitch and then a chain or something like that. But I couldn't quite figure out how I did that. So I ended up going for a tighter knit stitch like this one for this top. And I think I have like the whole tube finished, but I might need to add maybe like an inch or two to it. So I'm going to make a separate panel um, that has like some ribbing in it. So it stretches a little bit and that'll be on the back of the shirt. So this is what that will look like. The bottom of this isn't the same moss stitch. I am so sorry if you hear um, sound in the background. My husband's mowing the lawn right now. We haven't been able to keep up with the lawn because of um, we just had so much rain and every single time that we had time to go and do yard work it was just it would downpour and then the grass and the lawn would be super wet and if he was to mow he would like dig really big rivets into our yard so he's mowing now it's a very hot day i feel bad for him but anyway that's why you hear that sound in the background but anyway as I was saying, I added this detailing on the bottom here. It's kind of like a ribbing, but not. I thought it just needs something a little bit more at the bottom. But since I planned on um, pairing this shirt with these shorts and wearing them together at some point, I didn't want the ribbing to be like the same kind of ribbing as this. I thought that might look a little weird. I plan on like kind of tucking this shirt into this shirt. So I thought ribbing on top of ribbing might look a little weird, especially if it starts poking out. Um, so that's why I opted for a much smaller border at the bottom and like just a little bit of a different kind of ribbing at the bottom. Um, I think what I did was I did double crochets at the bottom and then what I did after that is every other double crochet on the next row I did a front post um, double crochet so that you kind of get that ribbing effect so that's what that looks like anyway so I also wanted to show you guys what I've been market prepping and I have just so much to show you so first of all I have been working on filling this bin and this is all like eight to ten dollar items that I sell. So on top here I have two kitties. Um, they're the marshmallow kitty pattern from one of my free um, amigurumi pattern test review uh, pattern review videos and uh, I made them both in this burnt yellow color and I think they kind of look so cute they kind of look like Garfield. I also made two more kitties last night. I made this black cat with embroidered blue eyes and then I made this white one and I am a sucker for white animals so she's a cute little white cat with gray whiskers and she's so cute. So I have four marshmallow kitties and then I have so many octos to show you um, and the thing about my octos is um, I have like 10 or 12 of them in stock, but they're all in the same color and I don't think they sell really well because everybody sees that one color and they don't think it's really cute. And then the other thing is that color that I use to make them, it, it makes them really small. So they're priced at like $6 and they're probably about this big, like little tiny guys and they're not stuffed really well. So that's par probably partially why they don't sell very well. But I've been cranking out a bunch of them. So I made three, at least three of each of these colors. So I've got three of this um, teal blue. Um, and the thing with this pattern is I've been using the same pattern that I used to use. However, I've been making, like I've accidentally made some tweaks to, to it to make it easier for me. So the first thing is my octos have nine tentacles instead of eight tentacles and I don't think it's super obvious, but they do have more tentacles than they're supposed to have. And the reason that they have more than they are supposed to is because um, I was supposed to decrease a couple more times before I got to the tentacle rows and that's why it looks like that. And then the bottom row, I just skip the last row of decreases. So I just skip 
from um, the tentacles straight into the decrease row where you just decrease all the way around in that way. I don't have to worry about working in that tight space for a very, very long time. But I think they're coming out a lot cuter and I really like them in this size. And then the other thing with um, these Octos versus the ones I already have is the ones that I already have have really, really, really tiny eyes. I think they're like one of the smallest safety eyes that I have available to use. And um, they're just really, really tiny safety eyes. So I've got these and they've got, I think they're like 10 millimeter safety eyes in them. And I sewed blush on all of them, which is also a difference between these and the tiny um, pink ones that I have that are, fr are older. And to be honest, I've been thinking about just giving away um, freebies like that in particular to customers who like make big purchases like just dropping in the little octo and maybe making some tags for them that say like thank you so much for purchasing or maybe making a small little banner that would go on my booth that says um you know like free gift with x and x like dollar amount of purchases and so um yeah, I think that would be a really cute idea, especially since those Octos are not selling very well at all. And there's also a lot of other things that um, when I initially started, I thought I needed a lot of variety because I didn't know what would sell. So like bookmarks and stuff like that, stuff that I test um, for pattern review videos that I don't really like how they turned out, stuff like that I think will um, <laughs> I will end up putting into this bin of freebies that I give away with purchases over a certain dollar amount. So yeah, anyway, we've got teal, we've got these purple ones, and then I have this velvety minty blue color. I've got a violet velvet color, and then we've got sky blue. And then I've got this pretty periwinkle blue. So yeah, I've got lots of different octos now and they're all like colors that remind me of water and the ocean and stuff like that. And I think they will hopefully sell a lot better than the Octos that I have now. All right, and then I have been making chubby froggies and I made them in all of the green colors that I have. So I have this forest green and I have this dark green, got mint and I've got the classic green froggy and I've been um, trying to kind of shake up the expressions that I have on some of these guys. So I've got some with smiles. I think I have two of each that have smiles. I made four of each of these color uh, arrangements. And then I've got the ones that look like they're kind of grumpy or like they have something in their mouth. And I think that looks hilarious. And I actually like it more than the smiley guys, but I know that people definitely have their preferences about what they want the expressions to have. Um, so I've got some nice, like happy ones and then I've got some grumpy froggies. So very excited to have all of these different colors of one of my most popular um, products that I sell. And then I think in a previous video, I showed you guys that I was also working on mallards, but I only showed you the yellow and orange ones that I'd been working on, I think. So I have three more of these classic colored ones, and then I've got three purples, and then I've got three blues. So I've got a lot more color ranges for my mallards too, so I'm excited to see how those do at markets too. I think that mallards are super popular and people really, really like, you know, little duckies and especially the classic colors. They really, really like this. So yeah, that's all the little things that I've been working on, all the little plushies. I've been trying to crank out as many as I can because I have, um, I'm sure you guys remember from my last vlog, I told you that I have like every weekend in October booked for markets. And then on top of that, I ended up booking one for the weekend before the 4th of July. So that's um, June 29th. So I go on vacation on the weekend of um, June 15th and I get back on like June 25th or something like that. And then um, when I get back, the following weekend is the weekend of this market. So I've been trying to make sure I have everything ready and that I have plenty ready. So I'm trying to stock up on all my little things because those are really my best sellers. 
um, and just making sure I have a lot of color variety and stuff like that because I know that having the right colors of some things really make a sale sometimes so yeah I just wanted to have lots of little things and it's easy and quick to do to make the same pattern over and over again but really switching it up with the colors makes it a little more interesting for me especially since I'm coming out of my I don't want to make plushies slump. Um, anyway, I've got three more things to show you and they are bigger plushies, and, but they're all the same pattern. But um, this is a, a pattern that I've only made once before. I made some jellyfish. So this is a free pattern on Instagram. I never ended up reviewing this for a video. Um, I think I ended up making it just because I wanted to try it, but it was before I had all my pra my best practices to like um, time myself while I make things, make sure I weigh the yarn before and after so that I know how much I used and stuff like that. Um, so it was nice to be able to work on like use this pattern again and really um, remind myself what this pattern um, feels like working up. And I, I remember dreading making the tentacles and especially working the bottom after you make the tentacles. So this is like a no-sew pattern and you make the tentacles in the front loops and then you come back to the back loops and you crochet closed the bottom. Um, so it is a pattern that I came back to because when I made this, it was like, um, I made this and then I went to a market afterwards and it was the first thing that sold and it kind of made me a little bit upset that I didn't have more of them because it is a big, a bigger price point. I think I'm selling, I was selling these at like $25 at the time. So these are probably worth about like $30 now. Um, now that I've actually calculated how much yarn I use and the time that I, it takes to make one of these and so on. Um, so now that I have a much accurate, what much more accurate price point for them. I'm really excited to see how they do at markets again. So anyway, I've got this pink one with rainbow tentacles and I got the pink little, uh, blue little glittery eyes in there. Um, so super cute. And then I also made one with the uh, turquoise teal top with pink eyes and rainbow tentacles. So we've got those two. And then I've also got this one. Um, this is a, a yarn, the tentacle color is a yarn that I picked up at Michael's um, and it's like so cool and it reminds me of a lot of sea creatures so I put it as the tentacles, I think it looks really cute and then the top is cream and I gave him like little yellow eyes so we've got all these different jellies now and I might make a few more, I might not, we'll see. So. Um, yeah, I'm really excited that I got all of these done as well. So yeah, anyway, I am, um, I'm glad that I had a lot of time and to, you know, make all this stuff since, um, I've gotten home from my surgery and that I've, you know, gotten into the swing of making plushies again. I was really worried that I was, um, nearing the end of my amigurumi journey. I know I get, in the past, I would get like super, super tired of doing the same thing over and over again. Not like specifically amigurumi, but um, before my business was pieces of scrap, it was Cassie crochets and I would make like earrings and masks and hats and things of that sort and it got really boring like really really boring and I hated making those things it's and I think it was really because um you know I wasn't seeing benefits of making any of those things I was making a bunch of stuff and then it would just lay around because it would never sell and I was only selling on like um threat uh not thread up but um you know apps that you would go to to get like thrifted clothing is really what I was selling on and it didn't really make sense to be selling on those apps but I was trying it anyway because I was encouraged by my brother he was showing me like listings that sold on one of those apps of like crocheted earrings and stuff like that and how much they were selling for and so I was like I can do that and I can make a lot of money doing that but unfortunately I didn't make much money at all doing that and um, I think that's partially why I wasn't super um, you know I wasn't super motivated to continue working on that um, kind of side hustle and then after that um, I started my pieces of scrap Instagram account but it wasn't um, this account 
that I'm on Instagram on now. It it was my handle. However, I uh, was doing um, pet portraits, so I was doing colored pencil pet portraits for people, and I did see some success um, doing that, and I enjoyed doing that for a time, but what ended up happening was I just lost motivation again. I wasn't um, really seeing a lot of benefit for the time that I was spending making those portraits. You know, like those pet portraits would make, like I would take, it would take hours for me to finish. And then the people that were commissioning me to have pet portraits made were like friends and family and things like that. So I felt super bad asking for fair wages for what I was doing and I didn't want to overcharge people or feel like I was exploiting those people so I was trying to keep my prices to like a bare minimum and because of that I got burnt out really quickly because I wasn't really making a lot of money for what I was doing unfortunately so that is another failed business venture and you know that's that's mostly why I was super concerned when I got really tired of making plushies that I just wouldn't have the motivation to make plushies again so I'm really happy that I've been able to crank all this out and not lose motivation to do it and I've been like super happy making plushies again and I find myself wanting to sit down on the couch downstairs watch tv and make the same thing over and over again because I just enjoy it so much and it's it's really encouraging to me to um have this strong motivation to be doing the same thing over and over again for as long as I've been doing it now. Um, it's been since August of last year that I've been doing this. Actually, probably before that, because before my mar my first market in August, I was making things for that market for a very, very, very long time prior to that. So, I mean, it's it's just nice to see myself not giving up and not, um, you know, losing momentum in what I'm doing. And I know that um, a lot of that has to do with, you know, the following I have on YouTube and Instagram and like being really encouraged by y'all's comments and about the fact that people actually want to see me talk about these things and want to hear my opinion about what I think about patterns and things like that. So I would just want to give you guys a huge thank you. I appreciate you guys so much for following me and watching my videos and commenting and, you know, leaving your thoughts and um, sending me patterns to review and everything like that. So thank you so much for that. And, um, you know, just let me know what you want to see in the future in the comments down below if you have any suggestions for me. If, if there's something that I haven't been doing that you really want to see me do in the future, just let me know in the comments and I will add that to my list of things that I should get working on. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you want to see more content from me in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell if you want to receive notifications every single time I post a new video. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.